Have you ever wondered why you can't get a coke at Taco Bell? It's because of Yum. You're also probably wondering what Yum is. It's a company owned by PepsiCo, and you guessed it, also owns Pepsi. We live in a world where the choice of brands couldn't be bigger, but the company behind the food industry has never been so few. Welcome to today's video. Today we'll be looking at how Nestle dominates the food industry. Enjoy. When a handful of multi-billion dollar corporations own many brands, it creates the illusion of choice. What you may already know is that PepsiCo sells a lot of beverages, including Pepsi. You may also have noticed that Nestle also owns KitKat and Nesquik. But what we don't notice is brands such as Nestle also sells baby food, Hot Pockets and DiGiorno Pizza. And even competing brands like San Pellegrino and Perrier are both owned by Nestle. The corporations create these illusions through daughter companies. A daughter company is basically a company controlled by another company, which is called the parent company. Looking at this chart, you can see how these 10 massive corporations control many companies under them. Take Nestle for example, the biggest food company in the world, number 64 on the Fortune Global 500 and owns nearly 2,000 brands in over 150 countries. It all sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's true. 10 big corporations own and control most of the food and beverages you'll find in the grocery shop. These giants own common brand names from Cheerios to Evian Water. Giant corporations like these have what is called a monopoly. By monopolizing the production of food, maintaining high prices on goods and paying low prices for raw materials, the food companies earn a big profit. Nestle is not just the only huge and mind-boggling company. Other companies like Mars, Unilever and more are among those few corporations. Their operations have a huge impact on our lives and diets as well as the environment. And that's also why in 2013, Oxfam International published a report called Behind the Brains. Here they take a closer look at the top 10 biggest food and beverage companies such as Nestle, Coca-Cola and PepsiCo. What they found was an unpleasant view of how these corporations operated. Nestle is a Swiss food and drink corporation and is the biggest food company in the world, owning some of your favorite brands, KitKat, Nescafe and San Pellegrino, and many more. Nestle's products also include baby food, medical food and bottled water. It operates in over 150 countries and employs around 339,000 people. It was founded in the early 1900s and has continued to grow and expand into different food industries. Nestle has grown into the biggest food company by following this model. It has led to an annual revenue of $96 billion, which is larger than the Guatemala's GDP. Such huge companies also have a reputation to live up to, and scandals in one brand can also lead to poor sales in some of their other brands. But it's not just all flowers and rainbows. Nestle has been under numerous scandals in the past years. In 2015, The Guardian published an article about how child labor continues more than 10 years after Nestle issued a promise to end child labor in the supply chain. Researchers sent by Nestle visited 260 farms used by the company in the Ivory Coast. They found 56 workers under the age of 18. So why was that? Awareness of the Nestle code of conduct was low among farmers, mainly because farmers were sometimes unable to attend training sessions either due to lack of interest or time. The farms also lacked any kind of age verification system. Some farms even labeled their workers as family workers to get away with child labor. Nestle has been trying to solve this issue for years, but it can be hard to identify child labor when they are working under their family farms. 
and that's also not to mention <clears throat> allegedly price fiction, controversial statements about water, and a lot more. But those are just rumors, right? Because of these scandals, people have been trying to boycott Nestle for years, but have had a hard time doing it. So why is that? When a big corporation owns numerous brands, it's hard to completely boycott them, unless you know every single brand owned by them. A company like Nestle owns over 2000 brands, ranging from makeup brands to even having a stake in Starbucks. So to say if boycotting Nestle has worked, well it depends on how you define a successful boycott. If it were to use Nestle as an example of how companies need to be held accountable for their actions, then you could define it as a successful boycott. But if the motivation behind the boycott was to weaken the company, then it didn't work. Nestle is still going strong, reporting growth and regularly buying up other companies. <laughs>